Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And in this short video, I'm going to discuss a legend of chemistry known as Mendeleev's Game of Cards. But before I can talk about Mendeleev himself, I first have to acknowledge Antoine Lavoisier, who in the 1700s, along with his contemporary scientists, determined a list of elements. They were able to identify several dozen elements using the technology that was available to them in their day. Now, although this was valuable information, of course, the identity of each of these elements, there's no organization to the list. It's just sort of a giant hodgepodge of different elements. But we all know that the universe tends to have order to things. And so, in the following century, a man named Dmitry Mendeleev decided to look for order in the elements rather than simply listing them off as they're found. Mendeleev went about his search for order among the elements using a deck of cards that he'd created for himself, in which each card represents a different known element of his day. Here in my example, I have just a few. On each card, he also included some physical information about that element. In my example here, I have the atomic mass of the element and the ratio in which it combines with oxygen atoms, both of which were known in Mendeleev's time. Finally, before we can begin, we have to discard hydrogen, because hydrogen, although it has a very special place in the periodic table, somehow wasn't quite clear to Mendeleev what that was. So for the sake of clarity, let's just ignore hydrogen for the moment. Next, we're going to line up our cards in order of increasing atomic mass, starting with lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, all in increasing order of atomic mass. Now, as I continue my line of cards, adding the next element, sodium, I notice something, that sodium and lithium have similar chemical properties. They both form a two to one compound when mixed with oxygen. So, instead of placing sodium at the end of this line of elements, Mendeleev instead placed it below lithium, forming a new row. Now we can continue lining up our elements with magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. And notice that the trend continues. Lithium and sodium are similar. Beryllium and magnesium are similar, as are boron and aluminum, carbon and silicon, and so on. In each case, when I place that second row underneath, I find that I have some order within the columns that I've created. So let's continue our game. Let's add potassium, which we would put at the start of a new row because it behaves similarly to sodium and lithium. The same is true of calcium. But now we reach an interesting point. As Mendeleev continued his game of cards, he noticed that to get arsenic, selenium, and bromine to fit into his table, he had to leave some blank spaces. Now this told Mendeleev that there must be some undiscovered elements that are just waiting for us to uncover them and learn their properties. And one of the things that's most remarkable about this story is that he proposed that these elements, known as eca aluminum and eca silicon, would have atomic masses of 68 and 72 and would form oxides that are 2 to 3 and 1 to 2 with oxygen respectfully. And impressively, his predictions were very accurate. We now know these elements to be gallium and germanium. So by playing his game of cards, Mendeleev set us down the road of tabulating elements in order of their properties. And as his work continued, we approached the modern periodic table. Although his creation was far more rudimentary, it was indeed the start of the development of the periodic table. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you on the next video.